Hello and welcome to Point of View. This is the new Honda Jazz Dynamic and it's the baby hatch or let's say warm hatchback of the Honda range. It gets some clues from the bigger much much faster Honda Civic Type R like this red stripe on the bottom here it's dirty at the moment but you get the point. So the Dynamic is the fastest version of the Jazz you can buy. It gets 16 inch alloys, some sportier details along the car, LED, full LED headlights with daytime LED running lights. And back here you can again see the red stripe, meaning it has power, but it really doesn't have a lot of power. It has 140 horsepower or 91 kilowatts. But then again, this car is fairly light, so it isn't actually a bad drive. So the Jazz was introduced, well, a long, long way back. Uh, this is the third generation, I think. Anyway, this is the facelift version and really not much has changed, but some restyling, new tweaks. I'm really sorry about how dirty the car is, but this is the boot. It's a small car, but surprisingly it has a very generous boot, I'd say. And actually on the inside it's not too small. No automated tailgate here, just a manual operation. If we sit at the back, you'd be really surprised how much legroom there is. I mean, you know, bigger cars in, you know, SUV market struggle with this kind of legroom. This is my driving position and I'm comfortably sitting in front and there's a lot of room back here. I'm not gonna say for five people because, well, it's just, you know, not that wide, but for four people, no problem whatsoever. On the interior, what they have done, they have made this orange stitching along the car to make it sportier. Has it helped? Well, in a way, yes, but it's really, really hard to, you know, notice this thing. And yeah. So this is the key of the Honda Jazz, regular Honda key, fairly plasticky. To open the car up, you have to push the button. If you get the Elegance version, or I think it was, anyway, it was the more luxurious version, you can also get keyless entry and start. But this car needs a key, just turn and the car starts up. Let's turn the heater off. It is absolutely freezing out there because it's minus seven, but it feels like minus 15 due to the wind. And I'm sorry I couldn't stay out longer, but it's really freezing. Anyway, this car has the CVT gearbox, <coughs> the automatic gearbox Honda offers. Unfortunately, there is no regular, you know, six speed version of the automatic. It's CVT or nothing. Anyway, the CVT gearbox is a thing you immediately notice when driving this car. It doesn't change gear. In the city, it's extremely smooth. I mean, no chatter, you, you don't have any gear changes. But the downside is when you floor it, it's, it really makes a horrible sound and... Eee! It's, it's not very pretty. Definitely not sporty, I'd have to say. Definitely not sporty. Thankfully, this car is also available in a regular manual. And that's the version I choose if I want to buy a Honda Jazz myself, the CVT. Although very good, but it's just not sporty. And if you're getting the dynamic version and you want the faster engine, why get the CVT gearbox? Just get the slower version with the CVT and be done with it. It means you don't care about driving anyway, so why pay more? It's just pointless. And if you want the sporty characteristics of the Jazz, get the Dynamic with the more powerful engine with a manual gearbox. Simple as that. And also save some money because this car as it is right now, this is the Dynamic and there is no options on this car really. You can maybe add some paintwork and stuff like that, but 
if you choose the dynamic version you get navigation ADAS which means uh, head up collision warning um, I think it's also lane warning something assist you get parking sensors cruise control obviously and you know regular stuff like that but and also full LED headlights but you can't really choose your options if you want a more luxurious interior get the elegant version this has the automated climate control panel and to me a car that's worth 20,000 euros yes this car right here is 20,000 euros and it doesn't have a automatic climate control unit it's just ridiculous isn't it I mean how hard can it be in these days to put in a regular normal automated climate control unit it's just baffling to me and if I already mentioned the price let's keep on talking about it this is 19,900 something euros and it's way too much for a car like this sorry it just is it should be at least a grand or two cheaper to really really compete with the you know Seat Ibiza and Volkswagen Polo and stuff like that because even in those cars they are cheaper to buy yes you have to option them out to get the better car but all in all you don't have to add a lot and in these cheap cars the options really aren't that expensive so if I had to suggest what to get get the cheapest version of the Jazz period you don't need the extra power because you really don't notice it and if you get the manual gearbox you'll get the most out of the 1.3 liter engine as well so what's the price I'd like to pay well 15 maybe 17 thousand euros that's really reasonable for a car like this cars these days aren't very cheap anymore and you know even plastic cheap cars are quite expensive so it's it's not a bad deal but just really choose wisely what you get and what you need so a little bit more about the options the navigation screen it's absolutely useless useless it's such an outdated design it's slow it's not very responsive the satnav itself is a Garmin system and just looks awful. It, it might not actually be that slow, but it's just bad to look at and very, very difficult to operate, not mentioning even while driving. And the buttons layout is poorly, poorly thought out as well. This side strip right here, there is no feedback on the touch screen buttons and whoever thought that touch screen volume buttons is the way to go I'd like to shoot you please it's just stupid you can't use volume controls like this you, you, you're gonna miss every single time while you're hitting it and you're not even sure if you're hitting it Honda please please make something in the near future that's better than this system uh, and by the way, by the way, this is not because the Jazz is an older model and it's gotten the, you know, older screen. Newer Civics use basically the exact same system. In 2018, come on! It's difficult to operate for me. What's it gonna be like for the older lady or gentleman who buys this car for themselves? It's just gonna be nonsense, really. Uh, okay, more about the interior. The quality is actually not that bad for a car like this. Yes, you get scratchy materials here and there, but you get plenty of cup holders and copy spaces along the car. It's meant to be useful and practical, and that's just what it is, really. One thing I have to really mention out is the front seats, and come on, they're so uncomfortable. And not because they're hard or something like that, it's due to the fact that you can't really change the angle of seating you know currently I'm sitting like like on a church pube it's flat and I don't feel like I'm you know comfortably sitting in a car now what do you think you're doing huh what do you think anyway a simple lever would have done a great trick for this car why didn't they add it it's anyone's guess really more good things about the interior I think it's very big inside you feel like you're driving a bigger car than it actually is it's quite small in on the outside 
you know, it's a small car, it should be small, and it's easy to maneuver and e easy to park, etc. But inside, you have plenty of room. I mean, you can, you can easily put four adults in this car and drive comfortably without a question. That's the ADAS system warning me, you know, front collision and stuffing like that, but you heard the gearbox, it's just whining. Ah. Now we have to talk about the best part of this car, which is the driving feel. And I really can't complain. And yes, of course, it's not a very quick car, but it feels nimble. The steering, the steering feel is almost spot on. It's not very hard, it's not very light. Whenever you point the car, it really, it really responds and you feel what's going on on the road. It's a small Type R. It's a small Civic Type R. Yes, of course, it's not as good, but as far as, you know, small cars and small hatchbacks go, this has to be one of the best handling cars around there. If you're driving a brand new, you know, Golf or Polo or stuff like that, steering is very light and it's very comfortable but you don't really get the feedback of what's going on on the road with this car you really feel like you're driving and I love the fact that they have kept the regular handbrake and to be honest I I might have been too critical about the CVT gearbox yes it's whiny and yes it's you know not sporty at all but in the city it's comfortable it's so easy to use you just push the accelerator and the car goes. What about the power figures? This has 91 kilowatts, 140 horsepower, 155 newton meters of torque. Mmm, that power. Uh, yeah, no. 0 to 60 in this CVT version is over 10 seconds. If you get the manual, it's about nine, I think. Something like that. So it's on par with the faster Ibizas and stuff like that but since they have a DSG gearbox and you can shift yourself yeah it's it's it feels faster in this car you don't really you know feel the power since it is a naturally aspirated engine 1.5 liters there is no torque in the lower rpm range for a small car like this please get the manual Please let's let's keep the manual alive and let's buy manual cars. Thankfully these cars are, you know, rental cars around the world, so I really shouldn't worry about the uh, manual gearbox. But if you're going to buy one yourself, please please get the manual. It's just so much better. Honda's manuals are really known for, you know, sleek and slick gear changes, so why why pay more for the automatic if you can enjoy the manual so much more? I have to mention that when it's idling at a set of lights, you don't feel the engine at all. It's silky smooth. There are zero vibrations. Yes, it also has a stop-start system, but currently, since the weather is so cold, it's not working. But yeah, the engine, the engine itself feels really refined, actually. Yes, with the CVT gearbox, when you floor it, it's gonna, you know, whine, but the engine itself it actually makes a fairly nice note to say it's not throaty and it's not you know loud but it's eager is it worth the 20,000 euros well I really don't think but if you get the manual version save a thousand euros and then you're getting a really good car for the price I think because if you look at you know golfs and stuff like that they are 25,000 euros if you want a good well equipped model so five to seven thousand euros cheaper than the golf or the Civic really if you want a small car why not why not it's not a bad buy definitely and yeah that was my short review of the Honda Jazz it's a funky car and I like it just don't pay too much for it. Thank you for watching. See you again, guys. Bye-bye.